Hi, this is Ashwin uh, from Indian Statistical Institute, Kolkata. Uh, the title of my talk is uh, From Combined to Hybrid, Making Feedback-Based AE Even Smaller. So this is a joint work with uh, Avik Chakrabarti, Nilanjan Datta, Snehal Mitra Gotri and Mridul Nandi. The motivation of this work is uh, quite simple. So we want to design a block cipher based uh, lightweight AEAD with the following properties. Uh, we want full rate. So uh, the rate should be 1. We want that the uh, state share should be minimal. So uh, apart from the block cipher state, uh, the additional uh, auxiliary state should be as small as possible. And uh, we want that uh, apart from uh, block cipher invocations, the additional operations like constant multiplication or XORing, uh, all these things should be minimal. A typical design choice for uh, uh, these goals is uh, the feedback based mode uh, where what we do is uh, we first encrypt the nonce to get an initial value so here it is y0 and then we uh, absorb the input uh, input data uh, the initial value uh, the intermediate output and an auxiliary state to construct a new uh, or next input. So this uh, absorption function is called the feedback function. So gamma and rho are these are uh, feedback functions. Uh, apart from uh, generating the next input, we can also generate a uh, output uh, or the current output data uh, through this feedback function. Uh, so in context of a feedback based mode, the state size is uh, it comprises of two things. So first thing is uh, the block cipher of uh, uh, block cipher state. And the second thing is uh, the auxiliary state s. So here the state size is uh, the size of y or x plus the size of s. Classically feedback functions were defined for encryption schemes uh, like uh, the plain text feedback uh, function uh, where the plain text is fed as the next input, the ciphertext feedback function where the ciphertext is fed as the next input and the output feedback function where the output is fed as the next input. Uh, but uh, what you can easily see is uh, that these functions are not uh, secure uh, as it is. So not secured in terms of uh, AE uh, as it is. So for example, you, you consider the ciphertext feedback. So in this case, the adversary can easily uh, forge uh, attack by uh, fixing the last, uh, in the last ciphertext block and changing anything intermediate uh, in the intermediate uh, ciphertext and uh, it will get a collision at the last block and hence it will get a forgery. So uh, we need an additional state so uh, basically we need an additional n bit uh, masking state for security uh, as an AE mode. So natural question here is uh, how small can we go in terms of masking state. So suppose uh, uh, we want a birthday bound security or to the n by 2 query security then uh, how small can this masking state be? So Chakrabarti et al. Uh, uh, tackled this question and they gave a uh, new feedback function called combined feedback or COFB that seems to uh, uh, that uh, uses only n by 2 bit masking and uh, achieves n by 2 bit security. So this uh, figure is for the encryption uh, only uh, Encryption uh, is, is for the encryption scheme uh, based on uh, COFB. So what you do is you apply a, a G function, a linear function G over the output, over the current output and then you XOR the message to get the new input. So there is a combination of both the output and the message to get the new, uh, to get the next input. That's why the, this, this uh, name is there, the combined feedback. Okay, uh, so this reduces uh, the state size to n by 2 bit, the masking state size to n by 2 bit, but what about the minimum state? Can can it, uh, is it the minimum or can we go uh, even further? Uh, can we go even further low? So uh, the first contribution of our work is uh, a lower bound on the state size. So what we show is that for any rate 1 feedback based AE mode with an additional state of size tau bit, there exists an adversary that breaks the construction with approximately 2 power tau queries. 
So uh, in a way, if you have n by 2 bit additional state, then uh, that most you can uh, have is 2 to the n by 2 query security. Hence, uh, COFB is optimal in terms of masking state size. So uh, another question is, can we optimize it further? Can we optimize the uh, design of COFB further? Uh, uh, a possible area of optimization is the XORing. So uh, here you can see that uh, it requires n bit XORing for ciphertext generation and n bit XORing for next input. So uh, in total, this requires 2 n bit XORs for the feedback function. So uh, the question that we'll tackle in this uh, work is uh, can we go even smaller in terms of the XOR count? Uh, so we uh, propose to study the hybrid feedback function. So uh, what hybrid feedback function means is uh, that uh, we give a feedback based on the hybrid of two different uh, uh, feedback functions. So for example, we can use uh, plain text feedback and cipher text feedback. So half of the input is uh, the plain text and half of the input is the cipher text. Similarly, you can have output feedback and ciphertext feedback where half of the input is uh, output and half of the input is ciphertext. Similarly, you can have uh, based on plain text and output. So all these schemes, you can see that they require only n bit of uh, uh, n bit of uh, exoring to generate the ciphertext. But of course, these are not uh, secure as it is. And uh, in fact, uh, when you uh, look for the security of this construction, you can easily see that even if you include any masking, the last two uh, hybrids, that is OFP, CFP and PFP OFP, these are not secure. For example, you consider the uh, PFP OFP, uh, or yeah, you consider the uh, OFP CFP mode where the uh, output is, uh, where the uh, upper half is the output. So this ceiling function is uh, represents the upper half of the input and uh, floor function represents the lower half of the input. So the upper half is simply uh, the output and lower half is the lower half of the ciphertext. So what the adversary can do is it can fix the lower half of the input of the, of the ciphertext and fix uh, all the ciphertext block as same and uh, change the upper half of the ciphertext at the last block and it, he will get a collision and uh, hence a forgery. So uh, these two modes are not secure. So in the rest of the talk, we'll uh, consider this uh, PFP CFP hybrid. Okay, based on this uh, hybrid function, we define this uh, AE mode called HINA, uh, which is uh, working like this. So this X0 is simply uh, generated using the nonce uh, with zero padding if required. So R is the size of the nonce and B0, B1 are uh, just used to uh, domain separate the empty and non-empty associated data case. Uh, this uh, delta value uh, or the masking value is uh, just the upper part of the uh, initial value Y0. Okay, so in this uh, figure, this figure is simply the uh, uh, instantiation of, of, of the of a general feedback uh, most uh, feedback based mode, uh, where we have to define this uh, high FP. So, a disclaimer here: uh, this version of HINA is actually uh, slightly different from the NIST lightweight submitted version. Uh, it uh, it has a different masking in the final associated data. This modification actually ensures uh, uh, that the AD and message processing are identical. And uh, in, as a result, uh, it will result in a better hardware performance. Uh, choice of uh, high FP function. So uh, basically, uh, as I said, we'll uh, use a PFP and a CFP based hybrid. So the high FP plus means uh, the, uh, the hybrid function in uh, or the feedback function in encryption uh, in encryption uh, algorithm. So there what we do is we first take the upper part of the message, we XOR it with the upper part of the output to get the upper part of the next input and this same as the upper part of the uh, ciphertext. The lower part of the message is XOR with the lower part of the output to get the lower part of the ciphertext and the lower part of the message is XOR with the current masking value to get the lower part of the input. So this lower part is uh, kind of uh, the PFB uh, contribution 
and the upper part is uh, the CFB contribution. Uh, that uh, you can similarly define uh, the decryption module high FB minus, uh, which is quite symmetrical to the uh, encryption one. So uh, another thing to note here is uh, that the number of XORing is just 3n by 2. So each line is just n by 2 bit and we need, uh, we have three XORs. So we have uh, in total 3n by 2 XORs, which is less than COFB, which requires 2n bit XOR. Okay, for partial data, it's uh, uh, quite uh, similar to the uh, full data case, but slightly different. Uh, so uh, suppose we only have the upper part of the message and that too uh, just uh, it's not full it's partial so what we do is we uh, first pad it and then XOR it to the uh, upper part of the output to get the upper part of the input and uh, truncate it uh, uh, as required to get the ciphertext upper part of the ciphertext in the uh, lower part because there is no message uh, as we started with uh, just the upper part of the message so uh, in the lower part what we do is we pad uh, we XOR uh, the lower part of the output with uh, one followed by sufficient number of zeros and we XOR it with the current masking value to get the lower part of the input uh, a similar method can be used for the decryption uh, algorithm okay in terms of security uh, in terms of security, uh, we uh, show that this the uh, AEAD advantage of HINA is uh, bounded by sigma e by 2 to the n by 2 plus nqe plus qv by 2 to the n by 2. So this construction is birthday bound secure plus uh, there is a PRP advantage term for the block cipher ek. Okay, so this qe sigma e these are uh, just the number of queries and total number of block cipher calls for encryption queries. QV and sigma e represent the same thing for decryption queries and Q prime is just the sum of all these things. T and T prime are uh, the usual uh, time parameters. Okay, let's uh, have a quick look in the proof approach. So we'll prove, uh, prove the thing using edge coefficient technique. So uh, basically what we do is we have a set of views where a view is simply uh, the set of variables arising uh, from the interaction between an adversary A and uh, its oracle so in uh, edge coefficient what we do is we first divide uh, the uh, views into a set of good views and set of bad views and we'll be interested in uh, the probability to realize a view tau when we are interact when the adversary is interacting in the real oracle or in the ideal world so the edge coefficient technique uh, it uh, says that if you have you know, the following two conditions so the first one is that the ideal oracle in the ideal oracle, the probability of getting a view uh, in uh, a bad view is at most epsilon bad and the probability for any uh, that any good view can be realized in the real world uh, is at least uh, 1 minus epsilon ratio the probability that the same view can be realized in the ideal world or in the other words the interpolation the ratio of the interpolation probability between the real and the ideal world is at least 1 minus epsilon ratio then the AED advantage is simply the sum of these two epsilon values. So epsilon bad plus epsilon ratio. So here we will uh, quickly look into the analysis of epsilon bad. Epsilon ratio is actually quite simple given the uh, the bad views that we define. Okay, uh, just a quick look at the notation. So init will represent the initial state uh, which can be either xi0 or yi0. IS represents the intermediate state which can be either XIJ or YIJ. Of course, J lies between the uh, initial and the final uh, value. And the final state is simply the last uh, input or last output. Plus represents the encryption query and minus represents the forgery query. Okay, uh, so the first uh, bad event that we identify is the collision event over uh, the intermediate state of the encryption query. So any in intermediate state in an encryption query collides with another intermediate state or say a final uh, encryption uh, final uh, state collides with another final state. Uh, in both these cases what you can show is uh, that we have two non-trivial linear equations. One in the output of the block cipher, upper part of the output of the block cipher and another on the uh, 
in delta values and uh, since we both of them are n by 2 bit long we can uh, show that these two system of equations holds with about order of 2 to the minus n probability and when combined with the number of pairs uh, sigma e choose 2 this probability is bounded by sigma e square by 2 to the n uh, a similar uh, bad event is when the initial state collides with some intermediate state now in this case uh, if the uh, intermediate state query comes later than uh, the inter, uh, than the initial query then the initial state query then that means that uh, the analysis uh, will be quite similar because uh, the adversary has uh, no idea how to collide these things but if the uh, intermediate state uh, query is uh, coming before then the in, uh, initial state query then the adversary has the uh, has uh, extra ability to fix the norms so it can fix the norms to match the upper part as required then there will be only one uh, non trivial equation which is in the delta value and which holds with at most order to the n minus 2 probability uh, to the minus n by 2 probability and uh, if we uh, assume that the multi collision value multi collision on the upper part of the cipher text this is less than n then the number of such pairs is simply n uh, n into q e and this probability is bounded by order of n q e by 2 to the n by 2 plus the probability that the multi collision is more than n which is simply sigma e by 2 to the n by 2 okay another bad event is uh, when the initial uh, state collides with the final state this is again similar to the previous uh, uh, thing uh, previous uh, analysis if uh, the initial state uh, if the final state query comes uh, later then uh, the analysis is uh, then the bound is simply sigma e square by 2 to the n and if it is coming uh, earlier then uh, the bound is n q e by 2 to the n by 2 plus sigma e by 2 to the n by 2 okay uh, so these were uh, the cases where only encryption queries were uh, uh, present now uh, what are the bad events using uh, the decryption query so the, the first bad event is simply the that the initial uh, state uh, that the intermediate state of uh, a decryption query collides with some intermediate state or a final state of a encryption query more importantly what we are interested in is uh, this uh, block xi pi plus 1 where pi is the first index where the decryption query differs from the encryption query uh, of course the encryption query should have same nonce as the decryption query so why this is important because uh, till the point where the uh, two queries will share the same prefix all the values all the xi values will trivially collide so we'll have we'll start looking from the point where uh, the decryption query differs from the encryption query again the adversary can actually fix the upper part but uh, there is a non trivial equation on the delta value in the lower part which holds with order 1 over 2 to the n by 2 so using again using the multi collision bound we can uh, get the bound as n q e by 2 to the n by 2 plus sigma e by 2 to the n by 2 uh, another bad event is uh, uh, or and the most uh, trickier bad event is uh, when you have uh, an intermediate state uh, in the decryption query collides with the initial state in the encryption query now in this case uh, the adversary can fix the upper part obviously uh, and uh, there is a non trivial equation in the delta part in the lower part which holds with order 2 to the minus n by 2 now the number of pairs is 2 to the n by 4 into qv assuming the non size is 3n by 4 which is uh, true in case of uh, the Heine submission in NIST so uh, because uh, the adversary can fix the upper n by 2 bit part so uh, out of the 3n by 4 bit of the nons n by 2 bit part can be fixed freely the remaining n by 4 bit the adversary has to guess so uh, adversary has 2 to the n by 4 many choices for this one uh, so the adversary has to do the n by 4 choices for this and uh, uh, for uh, to do the n by 4 choices for this so when you combine these things when you combine this number with the uh, probability for each such uh, uh, selection the this bound is bad because this bound becomes qv by 2 to the n by 4 but we need at least uh, birthday bound so this approach does not provide the desired bound 
so what we do is we consider uh, freshness of successive blocks so instead of considering just one such collision we will consider uh, successive collision so what we see what we do is we consider a uh, collision of pi plus 1 and then we also consider the collision of pi plus 2 so uh, in this case uh, the adversary can again fix the upper part in both the cases but now there is there are two non trivial equations on delta values so the system of equation will hold with other to the minus n probability again uh, using the multi collision bound what we can show is that this uh, probability the probability of this uh, joint event is bounded by n q v by 2 to the 3n by 4 so when we combine all these cases we can uh, we get uh, order of sigma e by 2 to the n by 2 plus n into q e plus q v by 2 to the n by 2 now uh, so these were all the bad events so uh, in using coefficient h we have to now just bound the ratio of the interpolation probabilities and uh, this can be easily bounded to be uh, this value say qv by 2 to the n plus 2n sigma v by 2 to the n by 2 so when we combine uh, the bad and the good analysis this will give the result using the coefficient h technique so this ends the uh, talk here and uh, i hope uh, you like the paper and uh, stay safe thank you